Hello, everybody. My name is Felicity Cross, and I am a member of the Yurok tribe. I currently live in Blue Lake, California, and that is Weop territory. I'm a student at Humboldt State University studying environmental resource engineering with a focus in water resources and water resource management. I am also earning a minor in geospatial analysis. So today I'm going to be talking about an outreach program that I'm going to be working on the summer using unmanned aerial vehicles, which are drones. I'm going to be talking about how drones can be used in different applications of science, um, particularly river restoration. And I'm going to talk about the cultural applications that drones can be used for. To start off, I would like to introduce a project that I'm going to be helping work on this summer. I'm working with Dave Marshall on a Native American Youth Outreach Program. And this summer, we're going to be holding a four-week program that allows Native American high school students to earn their drone pilot's license from the Federal Aviation Administration. And for those of you who may be unfamiliar with how drones work, in order to operate drones commercially, so for work, research, or any other business, you must have a license. So our goal is to take in 25 different kids, lead them through the courses, and provide extra substance that helps them be successful in this program and come out with a pilot's license. And one of the other main goals of our program is to create this really fun, friendly, and encouraging environment um, that shows students the variety of different opportunities that could be available for them. And in order to, this, to do this, we're going to be having dozens of different guest speakers come in. And these guest speakers are airline pilots, engineers, and scientists that are going to come and talk about their careers. And the goal of this is to help facilitate a passion about these different career choices and how they can use drones and aviation in everyday life and different opportunities available to them. We also have different HSU students, including myself, and we're going to be acting as facilitators to help these teams be successful in the course. And since this is purely online, it's really important for us to keep these kids encouraged and enthused about earning their license and coming out as a drone pilot. An example that we'll be doing is I'm going to be help teaching a geospatial analysis tutorials to the kids, and this is going to show them real time applications of drone footage. And because I'm a student in the environmental engineering program, I believe that this is a super important tool that we can be used to help protect our environment. Now, you may be wondering how drones can be incorporated into indigenous knowledge. And for me personally, I think they can be a huge asset in monitoring things like sea level rise, the effects of dam implementation and dam removal, um, tracking habitat loss for plants and animals, and monitoring things such as logging. Having recent and real-time imagery to help spread awareness and the changes occurring can also help us advocate for the further protection of the resources that we consider precious. Now, an example of how drones can be used and incorporated to indigenous knowledge is the Klamath River. Now, me and my family, we fish on the Klamath all the time. Um, my grandpa grew up in Requa and he has been a very big cultural advocate for the Yurok people. And for the Yurok people, the Klamath is the heart of us. It's what makes us go around. It's important to us culturally, spiritually, and physically, and so important that the tribe has given it the status of personhood. Now, what this means is that the Klamath River has given the same rights to exist as you and me. And it also has the right to be protected from any harm that is done to it physically. And that could be through pollution, climate change, or other forms of human neglect. And by giving a river personhood, this is a very stark difference between Western ideology and indigenous ideology. Um, while Western views might see rivers as resources to take from, indigenous people, such as our local tribes, see our rivers as sacred. We know that they provide for us, and it is our understanding that we must also provide and take action to protect the rivers, just like we would protect our families or our children. We know that without a healthy river, our people also become unhealthy. There's this invisible bond between the two, but the effects of things such as decreasing salmon populations, fish kills, this has a very visible effect on our people physically and spiritually. 
Um, so my goal is to be able to tie in not only indigenous cultural knowledge, but also a little bit of the scientific knowledge behind it. And so as both an indigenous person and a student in STEM, I believe that these two can be used together to reach the same goals. For example, drones can be actively used to monitor the changes in the Klamath River. Um, with the dam removal approaching, this becomes increasingly important. There's gonna be a lot of different sediment coming down. There's gonna be changes in the river. And we wanna be able to see how this is going to affect the rivers. Drones have the potential to get really small details in the images. And we can use this to map different habitats, the growth or loss of riparian zones, um, and just the overall changes of the river. There was a study done with drone imagery in Europe. And what this is, is they've taken this really detailed drone imagery and used GIS applications to create quantifiable data of the areas covered by water, areas with vegetation, the riparian zones, different types of woody debris within the stream. And we can do the same thing with the Klamath River. By being able to monitor it on a regular basis, we can actively see the changes in these types of areas. And that can help us petition for water release or you know, things such as dam removal. And this can be incorporated across the US in order to facilitate restoration sites and river protection. Additionally, apart from scientific applications, I think that drones can really help facilitate the spread of our culture. Though many tribal members live near or on the reservations, there are many who do not live in the area. Therefore, they do not receive the same cultural teachings as we do. And so I think that the drone footage can be used to create 3D virtual learning environments for restoration sites such as Sumeg Village. And this gives the ability of tribal members who don't live in the area to experience part of what is dear to us. It's not the same as setting foot in the village, um, but it's something I think that we can provide to people out of the area to help them become closer to their culture and learn more just about our indigenous approach to things. So in conclusion, I think that drone technology can be an asset to an indigenous approach to land protection and water rights and just protecting our overall environment. And I think by combining indigenous knowledge and cultural practices with parts of Western science, we can achieve all the goals we want to. Thank you.